Hey Wildcats, I'm Lisa Lane, and alongside me is my co-anchor, Alex Budish. You're watching Cat Nation. Today we're going to bring you some exclusive interviews, break down the Stanford game, and take a look at a must-win game against the USC Trojans. There's a lot to cover before the game starts tonight, so I say we jump right into it and catch some of the highlights from the Stanford game. It was a tough game to watch, so let's jump right into it. The top four reasons why we're unable to come away with a W against Stanford last week. Well, at least I think number four has got to be starting slow. The Wildcats fell behind early and couldn't really climb back against a high-quality team like Stanford. And when you start slow against a team like that, it's going to spell trouble. And it did for the Wildcats. They fell behind early and couldn't climb all the way back to try and get a win, and it gave them their second loss of the season. Well, number three, very clear, Andrew Luck. We knew we were going to have trouble covering him in the start of the game. However, he looked like a pro quarterback out there, and the numbers don't even give him enough credit. He threw for over 300 yards and had zero interceptions. Not to mention he rushed three times himself for a total of 25 yards and showed us his arm strength with a 45-yard bomb for a touchdown, first possession of the game. Those type of dynamics are hard to keep up with, and we clearly struggled last week. And that leads me right into number two, and that is lack of pressure, Katz. Andrew Luck, like you said, had a field day against a pretty strong, usually, defensive line in the Arizona Wildcats. The best tandem in the Pac-10, Brooks, Reed, and Ricky Elmore, couldn't really get an attack, Andrew Luck, and it showed in late in the game. Luck passed all over the field, the run game was working well for him, and all in all, it was a blowout. There was a lack of pressure, definitely. That Stanford offensive line played amazing, but the number one reason is going to be exactly what Coach Stoop said after the game. We did not execute this game well. We were out coached and outplayed. It was a physical game, and Stanford ended up coming out with more strength and beat our team. However, enough about what we have to say about the Stanford game. Let's take a look at the press conference to hear what our very own coaches had to say about it. Um, we knew it would be a tough uh, matchup, but... Uh, you know, just overall, we, we had a good week and just couldn't couldn't get the things done. Uh, too many drop balls. I knew it would be a tough uh, matchup, but uh, you know, just overall, we we had a good week and just couldn't couldn't get the things done. Too many drop balls, mistakes. Thought the quarterback, you know, getting hit early wasn't good. Um, giving up a big play early wasn't good. So we just. Didn't get off to the start we needed to and uh, gave them some momentum. Thought we fought and, you know, tried to get ourselves back in the game a couple times, but again, uh, just couldn't get the stops we needed. Couldn't make the plays on third down when you look at the entirety of the game. Thought there were some plays that were significant at times, but, uh, you know, overall, uh, just wasn't good enough uh, against a better team, you know, on that day. So. You know, we just got to move past it. We, we've, we've moved past big wins. We've moved past tough losses. I don't – it's it's part of the season. Um, there's still a lot to play for. So, I don't – you know, we – you know, it was a commutative effort <laughs> last week, and that's the good part. Coaches, players, everybody kind of contributed to that loss. So, um, you know, we need to, you know, just bounce back. We have before. Enough about that Stanford game. Let's move right on to looking at USC, and let's start with the quick fire. Lisa, you ready for your questions? I am. Let's start it off with Matt Barkley. All right, well, Barkley, not just before this season, but since high school, he's been a highly praised quarterback. This year, he's put up some huge numbers. He's thrown for over 2,000 yards, so we know he has a skill. However, two weeks ago when they played Oregon, we saw some of his weaknesses. He threw more interceptions than he did touchdowns, and he completed less than half of his passes. This means Arizona still has the chance to go in there, dominate the USC offense, despite him being back there as a leader. You're talking about completing only half of those passes. How about the Trojan receivers? 
Well, there are two receivers that stand out in my mind. That is Johnson and Woods. Johnson is a senior, and he is a threat back there when he returns those kicks. So when he's back there, we need to be kicking deep, hopefully in the end zone. Then when you look at Woods, he's only a freshman, but he is a go-to guy. He's already completed over 40 passes himself. So we got to stay tight on these guys and really limit what Barkley can do in the air. Well, Alex, now I'm going to send it over to you. Let's see. Fear factor. Well, USC hasn't really been playing anything because, well, they have nothing to play with. There is no fear with USC because they don't have anywhere to go. There's no bowl game at the end of the season for them, so they're treating every game like it's their big bowl game. And ruining other teams' bowl hopes seems to be the theme of their season. So watch out, Arizona, because SC is going to be coming to try and knock us off that high pedestal of third place right now. What about determination when it comes to USC? Determination is something that we really haven't seen on this side of the ball for USC in a while because they've been playing at the highest level of, of caliber that they can. Now that they've fallen from the grace a little bit, they, they are determined to get back and show the rest of the Pac-10 and the rest of the nation where they should still be considered one of the most fear, feared teams in the Pac-10. Hey, what's going on, Tucson? This is Reyes from the Radio Randy Show. I just want to let everyone know about our second annual Zona Zoo Undie Run during Rivalry Week, December 1st at 6 p.m. meeting at Old Main. I want to see everyone out there supporting the Rivalry Week in their chonies, tidy whities boxers, briefs, hangs, whatever. Let's, let's do it. Bear down. Now let's talk about a specific unit for USC, and that is their defensive unit. Oh, the defense of USC, that's a tricky one. Will they be able to keep up with the quick-paced Arizona offense, or will they falter like they did in the second half against the Oregon Ducks? It's certainly going to be an easy test to see on the field for Arizona, but it's going to be an interesting game to watch them go play out the whole game. Now, the question is, will they be able to stop the run game? That's been their biggest effort all year. I think the best bet for the USC defense is to make Arizona throw the long ball and hope for that interception because a lot of the run game has been easy on them. We saw the Michael James torch him in the past. We've seen a lot of running backs do the same thing. Now for some more insight on USC, let's take it over to the Radio Randy Show and see what they had to say. Thanks, Alex and Lisa. I'm Andy Blahill here, and this is Reyes Delatore. And this is The Randy Show. We appreciate you guys having us on your show. Matt Barkley is thrown for over 2,100 yards, 21 TDs. Six interceptions. He's a stud, I'm not going to lie. Those are some pretty good stats right there. Definitely good stats. Uh, so the passing attack, what do you feel about the passing attack? That's something we definitely have to worry about because our corners have been solid yet at the same time have struggled against, you know, uh, Oregon State. We had a tough time, and that's where they kind of exposed our weakness. But against UCLA, we did a little bit better. At the beginning of the game, but towards the end of the game, we gave up some huge plays down the field, which resulted in two touchdowns, and that's why the score is so close, 29-21. to 21. And we didn't just give up those plays. Like, on that flea flicker, our guy was, like, beat by 30 yards. Yeah, it wasn't even close. So I'm worried about their passing game, how uh, prominent it is, and our defensive backs have not been stepping up after we thought they would after the Oregon State game. Exactly. And then don't forget about their, uh, you know, don't sleep on their two-headed monster with uh, Alan Bradford and Mark Tyler. Definitely. Um, I feel like that's the college, like, version of uh, D'Angelo Williams, Jonathan Stewart, maybe. There you go. Even though Jonathan Stewart's not doing it for me on the fantasy. So what's your, what's your prediction? Do we get the win or USC get the win here at uh, Arizona Stadium? Uh, we'll get the win. We'll get the win. It might be ugly, but we'll get the win. And I'm, I'm pretty confident. U, uh, USC, you know, they... Had a rough time against big powerhouse Oregon. I think we're going to end up winning by, you know, about 10 or 7. I, I'm very confident in our, our defense with Ricky Elmore and Brooks Reed at the ends and our offense once, uh, you know, Nick Foles back. All right. Well, thank you, Alex and Lisa. Back to you. Appreciate it, guys. It's always great to hear from those guys at the Randy Show. They have a lot of insight, and their show's pretty cool to check out each week. A lot of fun, guys. Make sure you tune in to Camp Radio and hear them out. Well, now let's move on to the four things Arizona must do in order to beat USC. I'll start it off. We need to contain Barkley. They do have the pro-style offense, and he is a drop-back passer. However, we do see him roll to the outside a lot. That means in order to contain him, our defense needs to be attacking him from the outside. If we do that, we really limit their playbook. My number three has to do with the quarterback as well, but on the other side of the ball. Keep Arizona's quarterback feeling light and healthy. Last week against Stanford, we saw Nick Foles come out and look visibly shaken against a pretty stellar Stanford defense, and he should expect the same against this USC defense. Make sure that our defense stays on the field nice and tight, gives the offense some rest, and allows Foles to come out and dominate like he has done in the past. Well, number two, it's going to be control the line of scrimmage. We really want to shut down this run game from USC. They are 23rd in rushing, so that's going to be tough. However, we can do it, and if we 
do that, we really limit their use of the play action pass. So it's going to be a key to our victory this week. You're exactly right. My number one, Lisa, put the Trojans to bed early. Go right for the throat and attack and get some points on the board right away. We've let too many teams hang around late in the games this season, and we've done well having a 7-2 record, but this USC team is very dangerous with nothing to lose. So make sure you get out there, attack the air early, get the run game involved, and get some big turnovers early to make sure you get the solid win. I agree, Alex, and now I want to hear the coach's opinion on what we need to do to beat this USC team, so let's send it right to the press conference. To, to USC uh, today, and uh, this is a, a very good football team, very talented in a lot of different ways. You know, Lane's a good football coach, his dad's a good football coach, so they're very well coached on both sides of the ball, so, you know, and they got good players, so, you know, they these players of all the the sanctions haven't come about you know until this recruiting class they lost a couple players but and then a couple left but there's you know the the nucleus of their players are all stayed and are the guys that uh, have played for the most part uh, you know the quarterback is is very gifted uh, uh, he's developed you can tell he's a better player this year than he was a year ago and uh, can make all the throws a much stronger player than he was a year ago um, it moves around very well and, and it's very accurate with the football. So there's nothing he can't do, you know, on the football field. So they're, you know, very good and defensively, a lot of good athletes, uh, big, uh, just getting familiar with their system. Uh, but, um, you know, they run around and they hit you pretty good. So this will be another, you know, tough test for us. Uh, this is another big game and kind of redeem ourselves and uh, so you know I don't see you know I don't see us not doing that. And now it's time to move on to one of the most important parts of our show, the hot seat. I think I'm going to go ahead and put Nick Foles on the hot seat, not because of poor play, but because of the necessity to step up and win the game. Regarded as one of the best QBs in the conference and maybe in the nation, he really needs to step up and with three games left in the season, prove to us why he can get us into the best bowl game possible. Nick definitely needs to step up, especially since Matt is now out with a wrist injury, so we can't be using him like we would hope. But I'm going to put the entire team on the hot seat this week. We're coming off a tough loss, but we all need to just get back out there. Everyone needs to be taking it to the next level. we got to dominate against USC and we still have some great bowl games out there to get. So let's just throw them all out there. Everyone, step up. Let's beat USC. Time to get a good win. And now it's time for our favorite part of the show. Lisa, why don't you give me your prediction for the USC game? All right. Well, this game, I don't want to say it's going to be a close one, but I think it's going to be. I'm saying 33-27. Our Wildcats still win, but USC's out there trying to just crush everybody and make their bowl hopes disappear. So I think they're going to give us a battle out there, but we'll still come out victorious. I agree with the closest of the game. USC really has a tendency to jump out early, and the Wildcats have a tendency to jump out late. I think the USC comes out on top early in this game, but Arizona finds a way with the great Zona Zoo and great home crowd to come out on top. 27-24 Cats in a last-second thriller. No matter what, we always want our Wildcats to win, so at least we can agree upon that. Exactly. But the game clock is ticking down. It's almost time for the big game, so that's going to have to do it for tonight's show. For Cat Nation, I'm Lisa Lane. And I'm Alex. My team's a Wildcat, not a prophylactic Buddhist saying bear down and we'll see you at the game. That Wildcat pride.